July 1st, 2006 marked a historical change for Tibet. The world's highest altitude railway, running from Xining, Qinghai, to here, Lhasa, Tibet, began operation. Along with it, it's brought modern conveniences, but conserving this culture and land has been a top priority for Chinese government. Now, one year later, we wonder how Tibet is doing. Please join us today on Rediscovering China, where we will witness how modern medicine has reached these mountains. We will see if the environmental changes taken have worked. And we will take a look at a simple man's life living along the railway. With such fragile terrain along the railway, proper environmental protection measures were necessary in the construction planning. With more people and machinery coming into the desolate land, proper sewage removal and garbage disposal for the trains is one major concern. At the Gurmu train station, these trucks wait to transport all septic waste and garbage from the train to the main treatment center, a process that has proven to be both efficient and successful in keeping the land untouched. Every Friday, as dusk turns into night, these septic trucks here line up and wait patiently for the trash train to come through. Now, despite the fact that this is a bit of a messy job, I personally, when I take a look and see the natural light setting over top of these artificial lights, I actually find it quite beautiful. When the train arrives, the crew works efficiently to collect and sort all the garbage and drain the sewage from the train. All garbage on the train is collected in plastic bags and handed over to seven selected stations along the plateau for batch treatment. With the understanding that the railway would largely be used for tourism, China has taken environmental precautions for this fragile ecological system seriously. People are consumers, and consumption means garbage. Along the railway, there are designated connecting stations for both water and trash disposal. Once a week, the trash train comes through, picks it all up, and brings it here to the main treatment center, the Gurmu station. Domestic sewage, after being treated to meet the state's discharge standard, will be reused when possible to water green spaces in the area. Because of these basic environmental efforts, much of the land we pass by on the train seems unaffected by the railway running through it. is the Tsona Lake, which was quite famous when they were speaking about the construction of the environmental issues. What the workers had actually done is stacked up uh, sandbags along the shore in order to protect the sand and the water from any of the pollution the construction might have caused. Now we can see that all the bags have been removed and the lake and sand is clean. I saw some ducks over there and the color of this water is beautiful. It really looks like glacier water. Driving up about two hours away from Lhasa, we took the opportunity to see how the grassy areas once removed from around the railway were doing. 
Did the grass remain intact, and has it been accepted by the wildlife around it? This is an area we were in last year, and as we were driving along the road there, we we're like, let's stop and take a look. So far, as I can see, nothing really dramatically has changed. The railway is still in the back there that you can see, and the acts are still there. There's still the farmhouses, and everything seems to still be in harmony. We do have some of the patches of grass here along the way that I suppose are waiting to be moved back along the railway or perhaps will be left here to be adopted by the soil that's here now. The ecological system of Tibet is very fragile and conserving this during construction of the railway was very important. In regards to the grassland, which many animals rely on for food, what they did is you can see they've cut out patches of the grassland, moved it, finished all the construction, and now have moved it back. And fortunately, all around me there are yaks feeding off this patched grassland, which proves that it worked. Good to see. So the passenger trains pass through a protected nature reserve in China, one of the most famous called the Kukku Shali. It is this area that holds the most endangered Tibetan antelope as well as some other um, forms of wildlife. Environmental measures were taken extremely to protect this particular area in order to allow the natural migration of the Tibetan antelope. 33 passageways were built so they would be able to pass through with ease during their migration. The Shanxi Institute of Zoology deals mainly with the protection and supervision of endangered species. This company, of more than 170 people, has great achievements in the areas of protection and has published articles and books on the issue. They are the chosen company in China to watch over and supervise the threatened Tibetan antelope. 